Hey, you guys. In honor of Homeownership Day that's happening on January 23rd this year, I'm going to do a little bit different video series this month, and we're going to interview some of my clients and friends who have made smart decisions in real estate. And I hope that you register for Homeownership Day on January 23rd. It's at 10 a.m. Pacific time. And we'll also teach you how to make smart decisions in real estate. So enjoy this video with one of my favorite girl boss clients, Keely Kroom. See you next week. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. I've got a special treat for you. It is a client and a friend of mine. Her name is Keely. And I wanted to just bring Keely on so that you guys could see what a, an investor looks like. She's uh, got some properties in LA. And I wanted to talk to you about her homeownership journey so that you could possibly see if this is something that could work for you. So Keely, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having Tell me. Tell me about your first property. Where was it at? Um, what did you pay? Why did you decide to buy real estate in the first place? My first property I'm sitting in right now, actually. Uh, it was what? 2013 and um, I'm in Echo Park. It's a three unit building and I paid, uh, Echo Park by the way is LA City. Los Angeles okay. City proper. And I paid five sixty six five in 2013. That is um, not bad at all. I know, it's funny to think about now. <laughs> all right. <laughs> and now, um, I actually, so I have a full-time job as a costumer in, for television. And Wonderful. I was sitting on set one day and chatting with the makeup artist. And she was telling me how she had a duplex in New Jersey you know, when she was younger and she lived in it at one time and somebody helped supplement the mortgage. And then when she moved to LA, she kept it and she keeps renters over in New Jersey. And that was probably like 2012, 2011, 2012. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of the story that inspired me to also look for a multi-unit. Um, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. She's really cool. I still run into her on set sometimes and I'm like, you inspired me. <laughs> Um, love it yeah and then I've kind of stuck with small multifamily since very cool and then do you remember your biggest I think I might know it but do you for everyone else do you remember your biggest challenge with that property in Echo Park yes so this building is the old original house from like 1914 and then they put the two extra units on in the 80s okay so after I closed the city told me that it wasn't actually permitted properly for three units, which um, in retrospect was a little subjective, I think, but yeah, it was uh, an ugly surprise. Mm -hmm. And for someone who didn't, I hadn't done a lot of research. I was really new. I think I was 27, 26 at the time. Um, I really didn't understand what all that meant, but mm -hmm. I had to go through a really long process of um, visiting the city like multiple times a week, learning code, getting a variance. <laughs> so it ended up being like a years long process, but I had to, I had to learn so much about how city bureaucracy works, how development works, like what all these terms mean. Um, and I came out and I would come to Angie all the time for help. Like, <laughs> I don't know what this means, what's happening. Um, and then also like having new tenant questions at the same time, yeah. it was a big, uh, it was a big learning curve for sure for the first probably three years. Absolutely. And you're just juggling it all and trying to figure out, you know, which way do I go? Who's telling me the truth? Who's not? Exactly. I'm glad that you were able to navigate the city though. I, I get a lot of people that are frustrated with that. So then um, what led you to consider buying another property then and still keep that one that you have now? Because after all that craziness, I was educated from experience. And then I decided to educate myself further, a lot more intensely with like podcasts and books and um, other investor experiences and organizations and just really learn everything that I should have learned before that I fell into backwards. <laughs> um, and I that felt like, worked, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I felt like uh, I had the tools to do it again and do it better. Sure. And 
have a much more successful experience for me and for my tenants. Um, and it, it worked actually. Mm -hmm. My second property went smoothly. Yeah. Yeah. And that's funny. I actually was pulling up uh, your stats on that second property because I met Keely after my cousin referred her to me when she was having all of the nightmares with the first property. And uh, so I was helping her with finding and locating the second property. And it, you wrote 17 offers before oh, you got a property. Yeah. So I just thought that everybody out there should know, like, if you want to become an investor, like you're not going to write one offer necessarily and get your investment property. Like you have to have grit. And I applaud you for having the grit to, you know, just say, nope, that one's above my price. We're not going to go any further. And I feel like the one that you ended up with is absolutely wonderful. It ended up being by the hiking trail and everything like that. So that, you know, when COVID hit, people had some walkability and, you know, it all ended up kind of working out. Um, so how many units and properties do you currently own, Keely? Well, just along, along those lines of making a lot of offers, both properties that I have, I offered on after they fell out of escrow. That's so that, right. Yeah. So that was another thing where I just kind of hung around and waited for the right one. Yeah. I was noticing that on your spreadsheet because this one was under backup offers. And so that, that's something that I try to do too, is follow up with anybody that, you know, we're a backup offer on and we made the call and they were falling out and we, you know, jumped in. It was great. <laughs> yeah. So I recommend that too. It's, it's yeah. really hard with the emotional roller coaster, but if you hang in there for the right one, it could, it could still show up later. That's true. And, you know, I think you were so good about taking your emotions out of it. Like sometimes as women, we wear our heart on our sleeves and, you know, we get really disappointed and things like that. And, you know, you would just roll with the punches. We would get a new hiccup and, you know, we we're like, okay, this is, we're going to figure it out. <laughs> and you, you always did. Yeah, absolutely. So how do you see properties as part of like your long-term plan and you know, what next steps do you intend to take if any on your home ownership journey? Um, I see myself involved in small multi-unit investing forever, really. I mean, I see myself giving my buildings to my nieces in the future you know, if that should work out, hopefully acquiring more. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of go through phases of like resetting, sort of like slowing down and being quiet for a while and then making big moves and then resetting again mm -hmm. um, because I have this other job right? and because it's only me. <laughs> um, <laughs> definitely, if you have a bigger team, mm -hmm. you're able to, to move things along more. Um, what, what do you say? Go farther, faster? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so I, I recognize that since I don't have that, I kind of have to move in spurts, but that's okay because right now I'm keeping my W-2 nine to five job. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have plans to leave that behind at the moment, sure. but I would like to use the real estate to hopefully retire early, have a lot more freedom with that job, you know, be more choosy with my hours and find the work-life balance. Because the real estate work is the stuff that I enjoy a lot more. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> as exhaust, yeah, as exhausting as it can be. Um, so near term right now, I just finished a remodel. So I'm kind of sitting tight for a minute and, and dealing with COVID. But long term, I hope to keep doing the same cycle of um, finding an old nasty building, making it beautiful, putting people inside that are happy and then maintaining and that's really great, too, because not only are you helping yourself out along the way, like you're helping a neighborhood out when you take that ugly duck and you make it the pretty property on the block, you know, just like your friend inspired you by telling the story of the multi units that when you show the story of the beautiful property, um, you can inspire the neighbors to do the same thing and kind of just start this like, you know, uh, domino effect, which is is awesome for everybody around. So I have one last question for you. What advice would you give to somebody that is happy in just one property right now? As in they haven't really started investing? Like it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like they're a homeowner and they, you know, they didn't really think about maybe the home as anything other than a roof over their head. Um, what advice would you give somebody? Um, I think for someone who has one property right now and maybe hasn't thought about investing, um, the bigger you get with your portfolio, the more likely you are to be able to get off of the 
hamster wheel. It's all about the freedom of like, <laughs> have yes, <Yeah>. um, <laughs> having your money grow or have a mechanism to grow your money as opposed to just like running yourself into the ground and then spending it and running yourself into the ground and spending it. You've got kind of other ways to keep yourself afloat and um, yeah, keep keep the money moving with with a bigger investment. But having one is a great place to start because having a roof over your head especially in that, that we've learned in isolation lately is it's been the biggest blessing to know that your housing secure when so many people aren't, it's a really big deal and really important. I agree with you there. So many people got just a reality check last year on, you know, the fact that they were settling with a property that didn't really fit them unless they were working 12 hours a day. And then when they were stuck at home, that this wasn't a fit at all. And then they were also getting that reality of just, you know, I might not have a job and I don't have, you know, much to fall back upon here. And that, you know, makes everything shaky. So I think, you know, why I love property is it, it's just a foundation to build off of. And, you know, if you can't rent it out, you can live in it and everybody needs a roof over their head anyway. So we might as well just be owning it instead of renting it. Well, I think you're a great example. And I just, again, want to applaud you. Like you have jumped through so many hoops of fire that it would have turned so many other people off. And you're a success story. You're one of my automatic millionaire homeowners. And I just, it's a blessing to know you, Keely. So thank you for your time today. I appreciate you. Thank you. I couldn't have done it without you. And I look forward to more deals with you. Oh, thank you. Me too. That'll be fun. (laughs) All right. Thanks again for watching, you guys. Uh, If you would like to learn more strategies like Keely's been implementing, then you can go to homeownershipday.com and register for our yearly event. This year, it's on January 23rd, and we'll be teaching you how to find your happy place by learning about buying real estate all across the United States as well as across the globe. So I'll see you on January 23rd at Homeownership Day. You can register at homeownershipday.com.